most welcome. In this video, I shall discuss a matrix factorization technique known as singular value decomposition or SVD. The prerequisite for understanding SVD is the concept of eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix. If you need a revision of that, you can watch my video on eigenvalues and eigenvectors whose link is in the description below and you can see above as well. In this video, I shall discuss the fascinating concept of SVD, its geometric interpretation and its applications. If you like to watch movies or web series, watch this video till the end. In my previous video, I showed you that if A is a real symmetric matrix, then A can be decomposed as PDP inverse, where each of these matrices are of size n by n, where P is an orthonormal matrix formed with the normalized linearly independent eigenvectors of A. And D is a diagonal matrix formed with the eigenvalues of A in its leading diagonal. And in this case, we say that A is orthogonally diagonalizable. In my previous lecture, I discussed that orthogonally diagonalizable matrices geometrically scale space along some orthogonal grid and are hugely important. Now, according to spectral theorem, a matrix must be symmetric in order to be orthogonally diagonalizable. Furthermore, every symmetric matrix is orthogonally diagonalizable. That means every real symmetric matrix can be decomposed as a factor or product of three other matrices of which two will be orthogonal and one will be diagonal. If my matrix is a real symmetric matrix, then I can have this kind of a factorization available with me as per spectral theorem. Now, an immediate question occurs that what about non-symmetric matrices? Means, can we uh, uh, factor them as a product of uh, three matrices of which two will be orthogonal and one will be diagonal? Can we have such a representation available for non-symmetric matrices? That is the question. And this question or, or the answer to this question will eventually lead us to the concept of singular value decomposition. So now let us see what we can do for non-symmetric matrices. Let us consider uh, a matrix A of size M by N, a real matrix A. A real matrix A means the entries are real numbers of size M by N. Now, can you tell me, A is a rectangular matrix of size M by N. Can you tell me what we can say about A transpose A? Can we get any special characteristic of A transpose A? Any idea? Any guess? Absolutely correct. A transpose A will be symmetric. Why? Simply because A transpose A whole transpose will be equal to A transpose, A transpose, whole transpose. Because we know that for two matrices A and B, as per the formula of transpose or the property of transpose of a matrix, A, B, whole transpose can be written as B transpose into A transpose. So if I apply that property here, I will get A transpose, A transpose, whole transpose. That means this will be equal to what? This will be equal to A transpose A. So A transpose A whole transpose equal to A transpose A. That means this matrix A transpose A is symmetric. Is symmetric. So if when, when I have said that A is a real matrix, so this matrix will be a 
real symmetric matrix. So this matrix A transpose A is a real symmetric matrix. That means by spectral theorem, this A transpose A can be factored as a product of three matrices as I have written above. So that means I can write A transpose A as a product of three matrices P, D, P inverse where P will be exactly as above exception is now the columns of P will be normalized linearly independent eigenvectors of A transpose into A and D will be exactly as above a diagonal matrix the only difference is now the leading diagonal elements will be the eigenvalues of A transpose into A. So I can write or I can express this A transpose A in this way, PDP inverse. But your objective is not to express A transpose A as a product of uh, 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 these three matrices, means as a product of three matrices where two will be orthogonal and one will be diagonal. But our objective is to express A in that way. So let us see how we can we can do some more calculations to express A in this way or if we at all can do that. Before that, I will define a concept that uh, is the nth root of a diagonal matrix. It might sound weird. I'm talking about the nth root of a matrix, but it is defined as a diagonal matrix where the leading diagonal elements will be the nth root of the leading diagonal elements of the matrix D. That is, nth root of D will be equal to this when D is equal to this. Now, I will define one more term before or one more concept before doing some calculation. We define the square root of A transpose into A as P into square root of D into P inverse. What is meant by square root of D? You just can uh, uh, look above. You plug in N equal to 2, you get the square root of uh, 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 D, uh, the definition of square root of D. Now, if we if we just look above, if we just look above here, what is my D in this representation? My D contains the eigenvalues of the a, a diagonal matrix whose leading diagonal elements are the eigenvalues of the matrix A T into A. So, if I write keeping that in mind D here, D will be, or sorry, square root of D then square root of D can be written as this, where this lambda 1, lambda 2, etc., lambda n are the eigenvalues of A T into A. Now, although uh, it might sound weird that we are talking about square root of a matrix, but if you think you will find that this is really meaningful. Uh, uh, for example, if we if we if we multiply square root of a transpose a with itself let us see what we get square root of a transpose a into square root of a transpose a will be equal to as per the definition p square root of d p inverse into p square root of d p inverse that means that will be equal to p square root of d. Now, if you look at these two terms, if I apply the associative law, I will get identity matrix here. So, this will be square root of d into square root of d p inverse. Now, that means this is equal to p into. Can you tell me what will be square root of d into square root of d? You have square root of d in front of you. So, multiply square root of d with itself and you think and answer me what you will get. Absolutely correct. You will get D here. So, this is P, D, P inverse. Now, what is P, D, P inverse as per the definition? P, D, P inverse, it is written here is equal to A transpose A. So, that means this is equal to A transpose into A. So, what do we have got? We have got that 
square root of a transpose a into square root of a transpose a is equal to a transpose a, which is uh, uh, analogous to the uh, the concept of square root uh, which we apply for positive real numbers or real numbers so uh, this makes sense now you can ask me why i am talking about suddenly why i am talking about this square root of a you can ask me why i am suddenly talking about square root of a now i am claiming at this point i am making a claim at this point the claim is that suppose v is a vector which uh, uh, which i am considering as a column matrix then we know that when the matrix a is multiplied with this column matrix v or the vector uh, v we get another vector or this vector v gets transformed to another vector now the claim is that vector a v and in a similar way if we operate or if we multiply this matrix square root of a transpose into a on this vector v we will get another vector so the claim is these two vectors will have the same length these two vectors will have a have the same length it is a very very important um, a property and actually this property is the key to singular value decomposition this property will help us to understand what is singular value decomposition so this is my claim my claim is uh, when you operate a on a vector v whatever vector you get and when you operate square root of a transpose a on v whatever vector you get the two vectors will have the same magnitude now uh, here i have not given any arrow above v because i am considering this v as a column matrix now uh, before i show you how, how why i am making this claim or how to prove this mm, mm, let me tell you one thing uh, you you know that if x is a vector, then mod x whole square can be written as x transpose into x. x transpose into x with the usual usual uh, 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 matrix multiplication, the concept of usual matrix multiplication, where I am considering a vector as a column matrix. So fine. Now, uh, how this claim can be verified? Okay, fine. Let us do uh, some calculation to see uh, uh, how this can be verified. Now, uh, mod of a v whole square, as per as per uh, 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 the definition that I told you just now, this can be written as a v whole transpose into a v. That means by the property of transpose, we can write this as v transpose a transpose into a v okay this t is looking very bad let me correct it okay so this is equal to now if i apply associativity here what i get i get here v transpose i can write this sorry i can write this as v transpose a transpose a v by associativity i can remove the brackets and i can write in this way so now this again can be written as v transpose now a transpose into a we have just uh, uh, seen that a transpose into a can be written as square root of a transpose a into square root of a transpose a so if i apply that understanding here so this can be written as v transpose into square root of a transpose a into square root of a transpose a into v fine now let us see let us see just uh, let us see what will be um, square root of square root of a transpose a whole transpose how we can write this so that will be equal to uh, can you recollect what is the definition of square root of a transpose a square root of a transpose a is defined as p square root of d p inverse so if i apply that logic here what i'll get i'll be getting square root of a transpose a equals to p into square root of d into p inverse whole transpose again by the property of 
transpose, we can write this as P inverse whole transpose square root of D whole transpose P whole transpose. Sorry, I wrote somehow inverse here. It has to be transpose. So fine. Now remember, what kind of a matrix this P is? This P is an orthogonal matrix. So since P is orthogonal, we know by the property or by the definition of orthogonal matrix, P inverse will be equal to P transpose. For an orthogonal matrix, the inverse and transpose are the same. So I can write this as P transpose whole transpose. Now can you tell me what will be the transpose of a diagonal matrix? It is the same matrix. So this will be square root of D. Now P transpose, I told you that for an orthogonal matrix, the transpose and inverse are the same. So I can write this as P inverse. So this is actually equal to P square root of D P inverse. Now what is this? This is nothing but square root of A transpose A. So if I apply this property in this calculation, what I'll be getting, this finding if I apply in this calculation, I can write this as V transpose into square root of A transpose A whole transpose into square root of A transpose A into V. Now, again by associativity, we can write this as associativity and the property of transpose of a matrix. We can write this as A transpose A V whole transpose into square root of A transpose A into V. Yes. Uh, now, can you tell me by this definition what I can write about this? Absolutely correct. I can write this as mod of square root of A transpose A V whole square. That means, that means what? That means the length of the vectors a v and the length of the vector square root of a transpose a into v are the same are the same both of these vectors have the same length so that means if we geometrically think about this if we geometrically think about this can you tell me what we get if we if we think about this phenomena geometrically suppose i have I have uh, the V vector in, in the two dimensional axis as say this is my V. Uh, then AV will be something like uh, this. Something like this will be my AV. Uh, then this claim says that wherever this V goes under A, under square root of A transpose A, goes to a point on the same circle that means on whichever circle this point lies square root of a transpose a will be a point on the same circle that means geometrically square root of a transpose a will lie somewhere uh, uh, maybe like this i hope you understand why I have said that the two will lie on the same circle because you can understand that every point lying on this circle will have the same uh, uh, length. So suddenly when I am claiming that a v and square root of a transpose a into v are having same length. So essentially I can conclude that they are lying on the same circle. Uh, now, uh, now we can think uh, that there is a rotation we can even think that there is a rotation which takes a v to square root of a transpose a into v and uh, essentially this rotation is same for all the v's as per the as per the derivation we did here that means we can write here that we can write here that this matrix a is equivalent to R some rotation matrix into square root of A transpose A. Can I write this? Since there we can we can we can visualize we can visualize this A V and square root of A transpose A into V here 
the understanding is this vector a v is getting a rotation and is rotated to the vector square root of a transpose into v we can think that this a actually is equivalent to some rotation matrix into square root of a transpose a. so we can we can visualize a in this way now as per the definition of square root of a transpose a therefore we can write that this a is equal to r into as per the definition of square root of a transpose a we can write this as p square root of d p inverse so by associativity property we can write this as r p square root of d into p inverse we have expressed this a as a product of three matrices of which you can clearly understand one is orthogonal two two are orthogonal and one is diagonal if you look at this matrices carefully this is orthogonal this is orthogonal this is diagonal and this is again orthogonal now these three matrices are popularly are popularly denoted by the symbols we represent this matrix by the symbol u we represent this square root of d by the symbol sigma and we represent this p inverse with the symbol vt or v, v transpose so a can be written as a product of these three matrices u sigma v transpose where you can see what is u what is sigma and what is v transpose so sigma actually is a matrix which is square root of d which is a diagonal matrix and other two are orthogonal matrices therefore we have got that we can write a as equal to u into sigma into v transpose now this decomposition of a is known as the singular value decomposition or svd this is known as the singular value decomposition of a or svd now if we think from the geometric perspective then what will be done by these three matrices we know that this matrix is a rotation as if we consider the matrix transformation that means this will rotate your 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 object so this is a rotation now what is done by a diagonal matrix can you tell me i told you in my previous video on on eigenvalues and eigenvectors about this matrix transformations so what is done by a diagonal matrix yes it scales so it is a scaling it it will scale your 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 object so your your shape or space so it is a scaling and again this is a rotation so what is singular value decomposition geometrically singular value decomposition uh, uh, means when you apply that on a particular shape then the shape first gets rotated then get scaled and then again get rotated so applying a or considering the transformation uh, when you apply a is actually you can visualize as a as as a as a combination of these three type of transformations rotation scaling and rotation let us see okay let let i have let i have these two vectors in this circular region let I have these two vectors. Uh, then when I apply, when I apply this matrix V transpose, then uh, this the circular region or the circle uh, will get a rotation. So the circle will remain a circle, but only these two vectors will be 
rotated or in that way every other vector will be rotated okay so maybe after this after this rotation uh, maybe uh, uh, the vectors will will come to this kind of a position so maybe these are the position of these vectors after this rotation v transpose when applied now say after this on this particular circle and 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 all the vectors of on this circle or on on these two vectors i am applying this matrix sigma let us suppose sigma is a diagonal sigma is a diagonal matrix let us suppose uh, in in this two dimensional euclidean plane sigma is say sigma 1 0 0 sigma 2 the diagonal matrix uh, takes this particular form uh, now uh, this sigma is a scaling as we know that this will scale so suddenly if this scales this circle this circle will become an ellipse this circle will look something like this and as a result uh, this uh, due to the scaling uh, i can i can consider that these uh, vectors may be scaled like this the two vectors may be scaled something like this maybe scaled like this and this sigma 1 and sigma 2 will be now like uh, this the semi axis okay so these are my sigma 1 and sigma 2 after you scale it now after scaling again you will rotate so if you rotate this again this ellipse will somehow look like this so again i have a rotation say u so again a rotation so the ellipse will uh, will take a rotation will look something like this that means my vectors if i try to plot the vectors the vectors will be something like again the vectors will be rotated so the vectors will be something like uh, this something like this and my sigma 1 and sigma 2 will also be rotated so sigma 1 and sigma 2 will be something like this okay uh, sigma 1 and sigma 2 will look something like this so this now that means if you directly apply a on this on this uh, particular circle uh, you get this kind of a thing which you can visualize as a as a as a as a result of these three transformations rotation scaling and again rotation now remember uh, the important task or the scaling actually here is uh, is is being done by this by these values sigma 1 and sigma 2 uh, this values sigma 1 and sigma 2 and that's why they are hugely important these values now can you tell me what are these values actually sigma 1 and sigma 2 uh, let us go back to the derivation where from this sigma comes the capital sigma the matrix sigma comes this matrix sigma actually is consisting is a diagonal is a diagonal uh, 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 matrix yes is a diagonal matrix square root of d now what is square root of d square root of d is defined as this and what are the elements of square root of d the leading diagonal elements are eigenvalues of a a transpose a and 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 actually uh, uh, these are the eigenvalues of uh, a transpose a and uh, mm, uh, let me tell you by definition the square root of a non negative eigenvalue is known as a singular value of a matrix the square root of non negative eigenvalues are known as a as the as a, as the singular values of a matrix so when this lambda 1 lambda 2 etc lambda n are non uh, negative we call them as singular values and suddenly i am considering uh, this as a real matrix so it goes without saying that i will be taking here square root of non negative eigenvalues only because my claim is this a is a real uh, a real matrix real m by n matrix and i am writing uh, everything i'm doing everything for uh, matrices with with uh, with real 
uh, numbers, uh, uh, matrices formed with real numbers. So suddenly I'll be taking square roots of non-negative uh, eigenvalues. And uh, just just uh, uh, to tell you that that means this sigma, the leading diagonal elements of this matrix capital sigma are actually nothing but the singular values of the matrix a, a transpose that means these are the singular values so these are the singular values singular values so that is the reason why we call that this decomposition technique as a singular value decomposition so that means we can say that the singular values can be interpreted as the length of the semi-axis of an ellipse in a two-dimensional Euclidean space. Now, this can, concept can be generalized to n-dimensional space also where the singular values of an n cross n matrix can be interpreted as the length of the semi-axis of, 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 of an n-dimensional ellipsoid. So that is how geometrically we can visualize a singular value decomposition. So this is the basic idea of singular value decomposition. Now to solve a problem, we need to know how to find these three things, capital U, capital Sigma, and V transpose. That means these three matrices, U, Sigma, and V transpose. Now let me tell you there is rigorous mathematical derivation involved here which I am not doing. I am not doing the derivation now. If you are interested, let me know in the comment section below. I shall make a separate video for that. Rather, now I shall state a result and solve two problems to give you an idea about how you can find singular value decomposition and how you can apply singular value decomposition in data analysis. So first I will state a result and then I will solve two problems with the help of that particular result that I'll be stating here. So a matrix A of size M by N can be decomposed as a product of three matrices U, Sigma and V transpose as written here where the columns of this matrix U are M linearly independent eigenvectors of A into A transpose. The matrix A into A transpose after normalization. Means the linearly independent eigenvectors needs to be normalized and then to be used as the columns of this U. Now this sigma will contain a diagonal matrix, you can understand the sigma is of the same dimension as A. A is of size M by N, sigma is also of size M by N, if you look at this. Now, this will contain a diagonal matrix of order R, whose leading diagonal elements are the R non-zero singular values of A, A, T and A transpose A, sorted in decreasing order if the rank of this matrix A is R and all other elements of this sigma will be zero. So this sigma, I'm again repeating, the sigma will contain a diagonal matrix. There will be a diagonal matrix in this sigma because sigma is a rectangular matrix of size M by N uh, if, if M and N are, uh, are distinct. But the sigma will contain a diagonal matrix whose leading diagonal elements will be the non-zero singular values of A, A transpose and A transpose A. Now, uh, singular values means I'm again reminding you that square root of the eigenvalues. And you know that A, A transpose and A transpose A will have the same eigenvalues, same non-zero eigenvalues. So, uh, 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 this matrix will contain a diagonal element, uh, a diagonal matrix where the leading diagonal elements will be the square root of the eigenvalues of this a, a transpose and A transpose and the size of the diagonal matrix will be R if the rank of this matrix A is R and all other elements in this sigma will be zero. That's why sometimes you can see in literature or if you search 
uh, any other place uh, in books or, or, or in some other places. People call sigma as a diagonal matrix also because only you have uh, uh, you have a, a non-zero element in a diagonal matrix within sigma where the leading diagonal elements are non-zero. Rest, everything will be zero. So that is the structure of sigma. And V, V will be a square matrix of size N where, which will contain N linearly independent eigenvectors of A transpose A. Now remember, in this case, it is A, A transpose. In this case, the linearly independent uh, the columns of this will be the linearly independent eigenvectors of a transpose a so here it is a, a transpose here it is a transpose a and in in all the cases we will write the linearly independent uh, eigenvectors as columns after normalization so this is how we can we can decompose a as a product of these three matrices of which two will be uh, orthonormal i can say uh, uh, orthogonal as well as each of the column vectors are, are, are orthonormal vector means the set of the column vectors are will form an orthonormal set because we are writing after after normalization. So where each of this um, uh, uh, matrix U and V are orthonormal and the sigma is a kind of diagonal uh, matrix. So this is a kind of uh, this is the singular value decomposition. Uh, this is the singular value decomposition or SVD of this matrix A. Now, uh, 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 now let us solve uh, let us solve uh, some problems. Let us solve two problems using this. I hope you have understood how to find out U, how to find out sigma, how to find out V transpose. So, if A is given, our first task will be to find out what is A into A transpose and what is A transpose into A. Then I need to find out the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of both these matrices, and I will form the mm, uh, I will form the uh, matrices U sigma and V transpose, and I uh, we can we can check that after that if we product these if you multiply these three as a product we will get A. So that is that is that is what is to be done when we will be solving problems. So let us solve a problem. Let us solve uh, rather let us solve two problems one by one. So the first one. Let I have a 3 by 2 matrix uh, uh, given as you can see here. The columns are 1, 0, minus 1, 1, 1, 1. And I, 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 I am trying to um, uh, decompose, I am trying to find out the singular value decomposition of this matrix A. So as uh, we have seen in the formula above, let me, let me keep this, this thing in front of you. So we need to find out A, A transpose and A transpose A. They are eigenvalues, they are eigenvectors, etc. So let us do. So if this is A, can you tell me, can you calculate, quickly calculate, have a pen and paper and calculate what will be A, A transpose. So quickly calculate. You will see that A into A transpose will be uh, a 3 cross 3 matrix and that will be 2, 1, 0. 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 2. Have a pen and paper and check. I'm pretty sure you can check it. Now we need to find out the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of these uh, of this matrix A, A transpose. Now I'm pretty sure you know how to calculate eigenvalues and eigenvectors. I'm not, I will not do the entire calculation here. If you need a revision, you just go and check my video on how to solve problems of eigenvalues and eigenvectors and how to find out that. I'll simply write here what will be the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. I'm, I'm pretty sure you can do the calculation. You calculate and, 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 and verify with whatever I'm writing. If required, you can uh, uh, check my video on eigenvalues and eigenvectors. The link is in the description below, uh, as I have told. And uh, uh, so, so the eigenvalue of A, A transpose, A into A transpose will be uh, lambda 1 equals to 3, one eigenvalue, lambda 2 equals to 2, another eigenvalue, and lambda 3 equals to 0, another eigenvalue. So these three will be the eigenvalues of A into A transpose. And if we find out the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda 1 equals to 3, one eigenvector can be written as equal to, sorry, can be written as equal to uh, uh, 1, 1, 1. Uh, corresponding to lambda 2, one eigenvalue, eigenvector, uh, uh, V2 can be written as 
one zero minus one and corresponding to lambda three one eigenvector can be chosen as one minus two and one why i am saying one eigenvector can be chosen because you know that corresponding to a particular eigenvalue there can be infinite number of eigenvectors now i have chosen one eigenvectors in each of the three cases while choosing you keep in mind that these three eigenvectors or the eigenvectors that you are choosing should be linearly independent because your requirement is the column vectors of your matrices u or v should be linearly independent so choose in a way that your eigenvectors becomes linearly independent so these are the three uh, uh, cases here so if i normalize if i normalize this so that means uh, i have to multiply each of the elements with so i can write the normalized eigenvector or the unit eigenvector will be um, 1 upon square root of 3 so here i can multiply 1 upon square root of um, 2 in this case i can multiply 1 upon square root of 1 square 6 square root of 6 so these are the unit uh, uh, v1 cap v2 cap v3 cap so this so that means these three will uh, constitute the column of u now i i have to find out what is a transpose a. again you take a pen and paper and calculate what is a transpose a. a transpose a for this matrix a will be 2003 and if you find out the eigenvalues and eigenvectors it's pretty simple you know here that the eigenvalues will be lambda 1 equals to 3 and lambda 2 equals to 2 i am writing in decreasing order because to form sigma uh, the convention is we need to write the singular values should be sorted or we need to write in a decreasing order so which i am following from this step so now lambda 1 is equal to 2 so here if i name this as say okay uh, i uh, it would be better if i name this as u1 because this will be the column for the matrix u similarly let us name this as u2 and let us name this as u3 so u3 now let us call this uh, the uh, one eigenvector uh, corresponding to this lambda one as v1 so v1 will be if you find out you will get that v1 will be your 0 1 uh, so v1 cap will be the same because it is already normalized and v2 will be equal to 1 0 okay so this is also normalized so v2 cap is this so that means we got everything now what remains we need to find out what are the singular values so clearly if you look at the eigenvalues here uh, we can see here the eigenvalues are 3, 2. Here we can see that the eigenvalues are 3, 2. Singular value, therefore, the singular values will be, therefore, I can write sigma 1 will be square root of 3 and sigma 2 will be square root of 2. So, I got, a, I, I, I got everything. I got what, what are my columns of u, what are my columns of v transpose what will be my diagonal leading diagonal elements for uh, uh, for uh, sigma i got everything so let us write everything down and remember in this case in this case a is a um, uh, matrix of size 3 by 2 so your u will be a matrix of size 3 by 3 capital sigma that is a diagonal uh, which will contain the diagonal matrix will be a matrix of say same dimension 3 by 2 and your v transpose will be a matrix of size n by n so if i write therefore a can be written as equal to first u what will be the columns of u this u1 hat u2 hat u3 hat so I'll, it will be 1 divided by square root of 3 so this is my u now my sigma will be the diagonal matrix because sigma will be of size 3 by 2 and now what will be the other elements all zero so this will be my sigma 
and what will be my V transpose? Now the columns of V will be 0, 1, 1, 0. The transpose is same. So V transpose will be 0, 1, 1, 0. So this, so this will be my V transpose. And uh, you can see that here the size of this is 3 by 2. Here the size is 3 by 3. Uh, it is 3 by 2. It is again 2 by 2. So this is the singular value decomposition of this uh, matrix A. It's pretty simple. Uh, it's pretty simple. Only you need to know how to calculate eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Nothing else. Now, let us solve a very interesting problem uh, with, with, with the story behind it. Let us consider this matrix. Let us suppose that the entries of this matrix represents the ratings of five movies or web series by six viewers. Let us consider uh, the names of the movies are, are say randomly like Money Heist, Breaking Bad, Spy, Stranger Things and Dark. The columns correspond to the ratings uh, given to these movies by six viewers. Uh, now let us see if we if we mm, mm, decompose if we find out the singular value decomposition of this matrix A. What do we get? Let us see that. We get this as our U, this as our uh, sigma, and we get this as our V V. So V transpose will be the transpose of this. So V transpose will be the transpose of this. So this is what we are getting. Now suppose we are calling this matrix as U as viewer to category, movie category matrix. This matrix sigma I am calling as the category weightage matrix category weightage or impact matrix and this matrix V I am calling as the movie to category matrix movie to category matrix now if you closely look at the category weightage matrix then you can understand that if you closely inspect this matrix, then you can see here that suppose suppose I'm 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 calling that the first column I'm calling that the first column is for the category say thriller. The second column is for the category say science fiction. In this way, I'm, I'm identifying the categories. So first column is for the category thriller and the second is for the science fiction and in this way. Now if you closely look at this matrix sigma, you can see here that the weightage of the thriller category and the sci-fi category are much higher than the other categories. They are uh, much having much lesser weightage than this. So I can simply while considering I can simply discard these columns. I can simply discard these columns and I can simply consider as a diagonal matrix, I can simply consider this partition. As a diagonal matrix, I can simply consider this partition of my matrix sigma. So, because this is having the highest weightage and the others are actually uh, actually negligible, insignificant, which you can consider as the noise in your data also. Now, if you look at this U, so you can see here the viewer to category. So, so, so from this sigma, our conclusion is the maximum weightage is of the is is of the category thriller and of the category sci-fi, uh, where thriller is having even higher weightage or impact than than the sci-fi category weightage. 
Now, if we look at, so since since we have discarded uh, the three three other other categories uh, here, so I can simply I can simply uh, consider uh, the columns corresponding to the two uh, two major uh, or the two uh, two categories which are having most uh, most impact. Uh, more impact than the others. That means the first column and second column. Here we consider the first and second column if we consider. So the first column is for the thriller and the second column is for the sci-fi category. Now if you scan the elements in the first column, you can see that these four values are much higher in the first column than the other two values. So that means the viewer, the viewers, these four viewers have given much weightage to the thriller category or the first category compared to the sci-fi category. And in the second column, you can see that the weightage of these two entries are much higher than the weightage of the other, other elements in this category. So it implies that these two viewers, the fifth and the sixth viewers, they have given much weightage to the sci-fi category than 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 the other viewers means out of six viewers the first four viewers have given much weightage to the thriller category and the uh, uh, the uh, the last two viewers or the fifth or sixth viewers have given much weightage to the uh, uh, to the sci-fi category now let us let us scan the matrix and try to see what is happening here in the matrix the same thing is happening in the matrix if you look at this particular block you can see here you can see here that mm, uh, uh, that uh, that the here the weightage are uh, weightages are more than this but uh, okay okay fine let me scan v also and then i'll come to the data once again let us scan v transpose so now if i consider this v transpose that means look look here this is to be read as transpose of this that means columns will be rows so if i consider here again uh, if you look at this first row, that means here whatever is in the column for V. So if you look at this particular uh, place, you can see these three values are having much higher weightage than the other two values. Now, what matrix is this? Movie to category matrix. That means the first three movies are much uh, related to the category thriller, are much much into the category thriller than uh, the other two movies and if you scan the second column that means the second row of your v transpose you can see the weightage here is much higher than the weightage of the other three values so so i can say that the la uh, that the fourth and the fifth movie or the last two movie are much related to the category sci-fi uh, than the other other three movies so now if we go back to the matrix we can see everything what we have got as an analysis is happening here the first three movies as we all know money heist breaking bad and spy they are thriller movies stranger things and dark are are the sci-fi movies which we have uh, seen in uh, the same result is being reflected in v transpose that is movie to category matrix now you can see that the first three viewers have given much weightage to the thriller movies, which you can see as the viewer to category matrix. And the fourth and fifth viewer has given much weightage to this, to this uh, 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 sci-fi movies, which is again reflected in the viewer to category. And uh, if you scan the values of this matrix, you can understand that the thriller movies are having much weightage than sci-fi movies as per this matrix. Uh, this is completely an arbitrary matrix. I am not drawing any conclusion out of this. So this is completely arbitrary. If you have more number of data with you, you can have a more uh, useful result. So this is how you can you can interpret uh, 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 the matrices which you have got in singular value decomposition. And more importantly, most and 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 even even more important observation is see if i consider this particular this particular partition if i consider if i say a partition if i consider this particular uh, partition matrix this 2 by 2 matrix as my new matrix is sigma prime if i consider this particular matrix that means only these two columns which are which are relevant or which are significant to the corresponding categories. If I consider them as u prime, say, 
I'm considering them, sorry, I'm considering them as say u prime, say if I consider them as u prime. And here the in in, in v transpose the two rows or in v the two columns. That means this particular partition, this particular partition, if I consider this particular partition as v prime, then we can see here that this a actually this a actually can be written as u prime sigma prime v prime transpose what is the order of a the order of a where 6 by 5 the order of a where 6 by 5 now what will be the order of u prime the order of u prime will be 6 by 2 sigma prime is 2 by 2 and v prime transpose will be uh, 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 will be 2 by 5 2 by 5 so uh, as a result if you multiply you will get a 6 by 5 matrix and you will see that this a will be equivalent not equal this a will be equivalent to this product also just take a piece of pen and paper or use any software or MATLAB programming, you can, you can find out the product of these three matrices. Uh, you can see that A will be equivalent to these three matrices. That means what we have done here, we have discarded all our data which are insignificant and we have considered only the data which are significant to us and in that way we have reduced the dimensionality. That's why singular value decomposition is used widely for dimensionality reduction. That's why singular value decomposition is one of the most popular technique for dimensionality reduction where you can you can you can you can simply uh, 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 simply mm, mm, throw away the data which are not significant to you or which are not relevant to you and you can work with the data which are only relevant to you. So this is one beautiful application of singular value decomposition. Uh, now that's it for today. This has been a very lengthy discussion. So take care. See you again in the next video.